There are two kinds of electron microscopy, or EM, tools for enlarging images of cells beyond the capacity of light microscopy. In transmission electron microscopy, we can get up to a million-fold magnification, a million times, 10 to the 6 times magnification, and a resolution down to 2 nanometers. That's a thousand times better than light microscopy. Scanning electron microscopy, shown on the right, can magnify in the range of about uh, 100,000 down to a resolution of about 3 nanometers, so slightly less than transmission electron microscopy. In the transmission electron microscopy, or TEM image on the left of a bacterium, what has happened is a beam of electrons has passed through a fixed and therefore non-living specimen that has been treated or stained with an electron-dense dye, meaning a dye through which electrons do not pass. The parts of the cell that have picked up the dye appear dark in the electron microscope as a consequence. This TEM of a bacterial cell shows the paucity of internal cell structures. But do note the fine hairs or pili that coat the surface of the cell. These are helpful in the ability of the bacterium to recognize certain environmental chemicals or um, other cells. In the scanning electron microscope image on the right, we are looking at different pollen grains from different species. What happens here is the samples are fixed and then sprayed to coat the tissues with a very fine layer of rare metal. The SEM, the scanning electron microscope, beams electrons at the specimen, which are then reflected off the specimen, and the reflected image is captured by a CRT, basically a television screen, from which one can generate these pictures. As you can see from this SEM, it's a beautiful tool for looking at the surfaces of cells and tissues, generally at lower power than transmission electron microscopy. It is even possible to look at whole organisms, at the surface features of whole organisms. You can Google scanning electron microscopy and see lots of examples of SEM images uh, from very small things to very large things. To summarize, bright field and phase or interference contrast microscopy let us see the structures of and in cells. Fluorescence microscopy lets us associate specific molecules with structures. And confocal microscopy, a form of fluorescence microscopy, lets us see structures and locations of specific molecules in the context of a three-dimensional view of the entire cell or, or tissue or organism. Finally, electron microscopy is a really high magnification instrument that lets us see the really small cell parts and in some cases even some very large molecules. We can even use electron microscopy under the appropriate conditions to localize specific molecules to those very small cell com compartments or cell components.